All right, now we're going to talk about limping and excess reactants. In a chemical reaction, a chemical reaction can only proceed until we run out of reactants. Now, the odds of running out of one of the reactants or both of the reactants at the same time is pretty slim. Uh, so usually you run out of one thing before you run out of the other. As soon as you run out of one of the reactants, the reaction cannot go anymore. You cannot make products if you don't have reactants. And you need all the reactants uh, there. So the one that you run out of limits the amount of product that you can produce. We call that the limiting reactant. That's the one we're usually interested in when we do stoichiometry problems. Up until this point, you've been only given one reactant, the limiting one. Now, and maybe you've been told that the other reactant is an excess. Now you have to figure out which one's limiting, which one's excess. The excess is the one that you have more than enough of. You'll never run out of it. So as an example to the problem, here we go. How many grams of aluminum oxide can be formed when a mixture of aluminum is mixed with oxygen? So again, our our steps are pretty much the same as, as they have been in the regular stoichiometry problems. First thing we need is a balanced equation. So I've got aluminum plus oxygen making aluminum oxide. Now to balance that, I'm going to have to put a 3 here, a 2 here, and a 4 here. So again, that's our typical first step. Then we need to figure out, look at, okay, what do we have and what, what do we know and what are we looking for? We know we've got 9.72 grams of aluminum and 11.52 grams of oxygen. And we need to figure out how much of this we're going to make. Now, if we just look at this, we would think that we'd run out of the aluminum just because we've got less of it. But you have to remember they don't react on a gram basis. They react on moles. We can only compare moles. So the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how many moles of each one of our reactants that we have. So we've got 9.72 grams of aluminum. Get rid of our grams of aluminum and go to moles of aluminum. One mole is 27 grams from the periodic table. We'll do the same thing with the oxygen. We got 11.5 grams of oxygen. Want to get rid of our grams of oxygen. Mole of oxygen. Now remember, oxygen is diatomic, so that's going to be 32. So if we take 9.72 divided by 27, we get 0 0.36 moles of aluminum. And 11.5 divided by 32 gives us 0 0.36 moles of oxygen. So now if we look at it mole-wise, we've got equal amounts of them. Again, we can't just say that they're going to run out at the same time because we have to look at how they're reacting. But the important part here is this is how much we actually have of each one to react with. That's how much we actually have. What we need to do in our next step is we need to figure out how much of one of the reactants that we would need in order to completely react with the other one. Now, it doesn't matter which one that you pick. You can pick either one. Let's pick the example, we'll do it both ways. Let's pick the example of taking the moles that we have that we would need. So if we look at our equation, we got a 3 to 4 ratio. So 0.36 times 3 divided by 4 is 0 0.27. That's how many moles of oxygen that we would need for the amount of aluminum that we have. 
Now, if we compare that, so we need 0.27 moles of oxygen. How many moles do we actually have? Well, we actually have 0.36. If we compare that, we would say that we have more oxygen than we need. Because we only need 0.27, we need, we have 0.36. Since we have more than we need, we would say that the oxygen is in excess. We have more than we need. Now, what would have happened if we would have picked, and so by elimination, we can then say that the aluminum is limiting. But let's say that we didn't do that step, that we said, okay, let's figure out, get rid of our moles of oxygen. And go to the Here it's a 4-3 ratio. So if we take 0.36, times 4 divided by 3, we get 0 0.48. Now, this is how much we would need of the aluminum. We have 0.36. We don't have as much as we need. So if we don't have as much as we need, aluminum must be limiting. Therefore, the oxygen must be excess. So you can see why it doesn't matter which one you choose. You don't need to do both of these. You don't have to figure out how much you need for both of them, just one of them. And then the other one, if that one's limiting, the other one must be in excess. Now, in order to complete our problem, so we've now figured out that this amount here is in excess. It doesn't matter to us anymore. We could have had a thousand grams of oxygen. We're still going to be done making aluminum oxide when we run out of aluminum. So if we want to figure out how much aluminum oxide, we need to start, that's where we start our, our regular stoichiometry problem. In regular stoichiometry, we'd be going from grams of one thing to grams of another. And our first step is to go from grams to moles. Well, we've already figured out how many moles of aluminum that we have. So let's start there. 0 0.36 moles of aluminum. Let's get rid of our moles of aluminum and go to moles of aluminum oxide. At our equation, we've got 4 to 2 as our ratio. And then we need to go from moles of aluminum oxide to grams of aluminum oxide. Well, aluminum oxide has two aluminums. That's a total of 54, 27 times 2 plus 48, that's 102 grams in a mole. Again, my units cancel out all the way through there. So I've got 0.36 times 2 times 102 divided by 4, or about 18.4 grams of Al2O3. There's our answer. So our stoichiometry that we have been doing always starts with the limiting. Anytime we're given more than one of our reactants, if we're given a, an amount of more than one of our reactants, we have to figure out which one's limiting by looking at have and need. How much do you have mole-wise and how much do you need? And then we compare have and need. If you have more than you need, then it's in excess. If you need more than you have, then it's limiting. Let's do a couple, one more example. Here we've got iron sulfate, barium chloride, making barium sulfate iron chloride. The first thing we need to do with this equation, of course, is to balance it. In order to balance this, I've got two irons on the left, I'm gonna put two here. That gives me six chlorides. So I'm gonna need a three here. That gives me three bariums, put a three here, three sulfates unbalanced, right there. Now I'm given both reactants again, 50 grams of one, 100 grams of the other. So the first thing I need to do is I need to go from grams of iron sulfate 
to grams of barium chloride. Uh, and figure out how many moles of each one that I have. What I want you to do now is pause the, the recording and then come back and check that part of your answer. So the first step, figure out how many moles of each one that you have. All right, so we've got 50 grams of Fe2SO4-3. And I've got 100 grams of BaCl2. Get rid of our grams. Barium chloride. Iron sulfate. And go to moles. Iron sulfate, moles of barium chloride. Now, one mole of barium chloride has barium, which is 137, plus the chlorine, which is 208 grams in one mole. Iron sulfate is 56 times 2 plus I've got three sulfurs plus I've got 12 oxygens which gives me a total mass of 400 so 50 <laughs> divided by 400 is 0 0.125 moles of Fe2SO4-3. 100 divided by 208 gives me 0 0.48 moles of barium chloride. Again, this is how much we have. I'm going to pick one and figure out how much I need of the other. I'm going to take the barium chloride, get rid of my moles of barium chloride, go to moles of Fe2SO4, 3. It's a 3 to 1 ratio. So 0.48 divided by 3 is 0 0.16 moles Fe2SO4, 3. Ooh, that's a mess there, but that's what it is. So I have 0.125. I need 0.16. So I have, this is need again, I have more iron sulfate than I need. Less, I have less iron sulfate than I need, I'm sorry. I need 0.125. I, I need 0.16. I have 0.125. So that would mean that my iron sulfate is limiting. Here's my limiting one. The 100 grams doesn't matter to me anymore. So now what we need to do is starting with our 50 grams of iron sulfate, figure out how many grams of iron chloride we're going to produce. Again, at this point, let's pause it. This is doing regular stoichiometry. You do it on your own, come back and check your answer. So again, I'm going to start with 0.125 moles of the iron sulfate. Because I've already figured that out, that would be my first stoichiometry step. I'm going to get rid of my moles of iron sulfate and go to moles of iron chloride. It's a two to one ratio. Next, I need to get rid of my moles of iron chloride. Go to iron chloride. One mole of iron chloride is about 162.5. It's called 163. That gives me three significant digits. 
And so this will give me an answer in grams of iron chloride. 0.125 times 2 times 163 gives me about 41 grams of iron chloride. That's how much should be produced. And we've got some barium chloride left over. All right, last one. And this one I want you to do all on your own. We'll do it step by step. You're going to pause it and you're going to come back. So we've got how much silver phosphate is produced if 10 grams of silver acetate are reacted with 25 grams of sodium phosphate. So our first step, balance chemical equation. This might be a challenge for some of you. This is some big stuff here. You're going to have to look up what acetate is. Uh, but pause the video and come back when you've got a balanced chemical equation and check it against the one that we've come up with. All right, the balanced chemical equation, oops. All right, so we've got three silver acetates, C2H3O2, one Na3PO4, making one Ag3PO4 and three sodium acetates. Next, we need to figure out what we know and what we're looking for. So right below each one of those, what you know and then which one you're looking for. Pause the video, then come back again. All right, we know that we've got 10 grams and 25 grams and we're looking for Ag3PO4. So the next thing you need to do is you need to figure out which one is limiting. So now you need to figure out how much you have of silver acetate, how much you have of sodium phosphate. Pick one, figure out how much you need of the other, and then determine if you've got a limiting or excess reactants. Pause the video and come back when you're done with that. All right, if we go down, Now we can see that, okay, if I start with my 10 grams of silver acetate, it's 167 grams in a mole, so I've got 0.06 moles of silver acetate that I have. Starting with 25 grams of sodium phosphate, I've got 0.15 grams of sodium phosphate. Again, that's how much I have of each one. I then chose figuring out how much silver acetate that I would need, which is 0.45. Again, this ratio comes out of my balanced chemical equation. I have 0.06. In order to react to all my sodium phosphate, I would need 0.45. I then have more than I need, so the limiting one is silver acetate. At this point, we can now figure out how much silver phosphate because we know that the 25 grams doesn't matter to us anymore. We're going to start with 10 grams of silver acetate and figure out silver phosphate. So again, pause the video and then come back and check your answer. All right, here we go. We've got 0.06 moles of silver acetate. Again, we took that from up here because that's our limiting. We use our mole ratio of 3 to 1. Silver phosphate is 419 grams per mole, so we should be making 8.4 grams of silver phosphate. Now to add one final thing in there, let's say we actually did this reaction and we only came up with 7.6 grams of silver phosphate. 
we should have made 8.4. So our percent yield would be 7.6 divided by 8.4, or about 90.4% yield. Make sure you're working on the problems, keeping up with those.